Hebrews 10 and verse 7, please. We will start tonight. Will we get finished? No. The everlasting gospel is impossible to finish. We just stop. Then it says, I, lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will, O God. That's the seventh verse. Jesus came to do the will of God. You're right about that. But you know what? We also want to do God's will. If you love the Lord, that's what you want. That's all you really want. And He'll provide for everything else. I've learned that over the years. If we would do God's will, then He would take care of everything else. It's when I get out of the will of God, just a little is when Satan really combats us. And it, it, it's tough enough being in the will of God, but uh, victory is, shall we say, uh, expedited for us. So many years ago, we put a little booklet together called the Jumpstart Book, and uh, it's gone all over the place, thousands of copies. I had a teacher one time request one of those. I said, why? Well, I want to teach it to our, our children in school. Remember that, Brother Nani? And uh, so she did exactly that. But there's only one perfect will, but then if we want to dissect this a little bit, we, we believe that there's a general will of God for every believer, but a specific will of God for every believer. Amen. Secondly, and simply stated, once we practice the general will of God, then in the process of time, God will reveal to the individuals and corporately the specific will of God. That's the goal. If you're not there yet, then keep practicing the general will of God and the Lord will reveal it to you in a process of time. And then you will know. And don't let Satan back you off from it because that's the will of God for you specifically. I am not on the, the specific will of God tonight. It's the general will of God for every person on this earth. The most important subject known to man other than, of course, salvation. Of course, that's the will of God also. All right. Ephesians 1.4 Okay, praise God. Thank you, Father God, for your living word. Hallelujah. Amen. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy. Uh, does that word ring a bell? Was I on that this morning? That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. For out of love, we're not holy and without blame. Amen. And this word holy to refresh your pure minds because most of you had a nap this afternoon and you know, you forgot what was preached this morning, right? You didn't? Okay. Dedicated and consecrated to God. That involves purpose and devotion to God. To be morally and spiritually excellent now, add a little word this afternoon to be pure. To be pure before God. Hands not defiled, see. Pure, a clean heart. God, uh, David said, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and create a clean heart in me, O Lord. See. Wash me, he said, uh, with hyssop, and I shall be white as wool. The only way we can be pure before God is the blood of the Lamb on our lives. That's the purifying agent, the living blood that is upon us and cleanses us as we serve Him in holiness. I want to bring it home tonight. Because Hebrews 12, 14 says something that is very stern. And yet, it isn't for those that endeavor to do the will of God. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 12, 14. 
And we'll get, we'll get to it here in just a minute about the holiness thing. But this man, talking about Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, that's the reason, folks, the Catholic Church is wrong. God bless the Catholics, but you don't sacrifice Christ every time you receive the Eucharist. That's idolatry. So that's out. That's out. Amen. So I'm a Protestant. I protest against these things. When I went in the military, they asked me, are you Catholic or Protestant? Of course, I was a heathen. I wasn't either one. Either one. <laughs> Drill sergeant said, no, you got to be one or the other. Which one is it? And I thought, well, I could be Catholic because they drink, you know. <laughs> I said, no, I'm a Protestant. So they wrote Protestant on my dog tags. Mm -hmm. I'm still a Protestant, but now I'm saved. Praise God. Born again. Big difference. So that verse then, he sat down on the right hand of God. Now, it's all finished. Done deal in the bag. Hallelujah. Amen. But this word holiness, I don't know if I jotted down that verse. Maybe, maybe I did, but Hebrews said, Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Oh, thank you. I was looking at my wrong note there. I can't read writing when it's wrote, all right? Say it with me out loud. Follow peace with all men and without holiness. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. When I first began to read the Bible, I thought, it's talking backwards. But actually, we're the ones who talk backwards. The point is today, without a holiness, no one shall see the Lord. So what is holiness? I just gave you the definition. But mainly, it's a pure heart. They taught me in Bible school, holiness is this. A pure heart and a, poor, and a good attitude toward God that always says yes. Doesn't argue. If we argue with the Lord, we're out of the holiness realm. He's always right. But holiness, further, is a state of purity. Amen. That's what holiness is in, in a condensed definition. It is a state of purity, sanctified. Does anyone remember the word sanctified, sanctified this morning? Amen. But holiness is almost synonymous to sanctification. But it's mainly a state of purity and innocence. You know, young people are in a state of innocence. But it's not long the world corrupts them. Right. Only Christ can bring back that childlike state of innocence and purity in the believer. That's what we're supposed to be like. Amen. Children of God. I mean, childlike faith, that's where it's at. It's not trying to figure everything out. Just trust God, believe God, and know that God cares and loves, and He'll do what's right. Simple, childlike faith. That's all that's required. Amen. Amen. And that helps us to, to remain in this holiness condition. But now concerning the general will of God, salvation is top priority. All right. Revelations 1.5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sin in his own blood. Amen. No other way of salvation. Then Paul said this in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12 to 9. Amen. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none or no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So the name that's above every name is what really matters. And that name denotes character and holiness and all the attributes of God in one person. That's the reason Jesus... Uh, express the fullness of God 
yet in a man, the Son of Man, which he was. Then in 1 Timothy 2 and verse 3, verse 3 and 4, 1 Timothy chapter 2, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. So this is the will of God. Who will have all men to be saved. You know it's not God's will for anybody to be lost. None. None. They're out of the will of God if they're not saved. They're out of the will of God if they're not born of the Spirit of God. Amen. And so those of us tonight that uh, came to our senses in the end of the way and we, we bowed the knee to King Jesus, accepted Him as Savior and Lord of our life, repented of our sins, were converted, regenerated, and transferred into the kingdom of God, we're different than the world. Amen. We're not like the world. We're in the world, but we're not of it. You're never going to fit in. Huh? Because they have a different spirit than we do. We have the Holy Spirit. They have the unholy spirit. Big difference. So Jesus said, you must be born again to enter into the kingdom of God. That's it, final. And the only way is the cross. There is no other way of salvation, period. Can't work your way in. Religion won't do it. Penance won't do it. Only faith in Christ and the shed blood on the cross of Calvary is the only way to be saved. And God wants people saved. He wants them to come to the knowledge of the truth. You see the last part of that verse? To come to the knowledge of the truth. Well, Jesus is the truth. He is the way. He is the life. And no man comes to the Father but by Him. That's it, period. So we preach Christ and Him crucified, number one, so people have an opportunity to get saved. Amen. To become born of the Spirit of God and make heaven their home. That's good news. But it's hell on earth if they reject the message. You haven't done that, have you? Thank God you haven't. Amen. It was God's will for you to be saved. And He did just exactly that. So Jesus was sinless. He shed his sinless blood on the cross. In Hebrews 10, 12, I'm talking about salvation. Just skimming the general will of God for a few minutes for us tonight. It's the strangest thing when I go to Africa and we've taught the general will of God, specific will of God for years. And every time we go back, they want the same message. <laughs> because there's new ones coming in and they don't know. So, will it be the same message this time? Uh, I always preach the cross and the Holy Ghost. Always. The final details, uh, that comes later. Amen. Hebrews 10, 12. Again, then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written, to do thy will, O God. So that's why Jesus came, to do the will of God. Amen. That's why we're here on the earth, to do God's will. If we complete God's will for our personal life, we're out of here. There'll be no reason to stay here. But apparently we have it because we're here tonight. So God has a mission for us, an assignment in His will. Amen. So, the second thing then is water baptism. Water baptism. They used to have uh, uh, a hog trough back here. And people would get run through there and dunked back here. You don't know how many people. Did you? Well, too bad it didn't work. All right. So, but... The, they would run back here and get baptized. There's been people in this town, they've told me, oh, I was baptized in that church. Well, too bad it didn't stick, huh? Yeah. All right. Water baptism is very important, but it will not save your soul. Matthew 28, 19. Now, after you're born again, we are commanded to be water baptized. It is not optional. If you reject that, you're out of the will of God. 
I'm talking about the will of God to the church tonight. As far as I know, all you have been water baptized. Thank God for it. You're baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, aren't you? Not Jesus only. Put up the scripture, please. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Notice in the name that's singular, but then there are three persons in one divine Godhead. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. These three are one. Had a guy ask one time, will you baptize me in Jesus' name? I said, no, but I will baptize the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. I won't deny the Father, the Holy Ghost. You think I'm crazy? No. So there's a set formula, and by the way, this is a command. Not optional. If you reject water baptism, you're out of the will of God. How many has been water baptized? Say amen. amen. Now, if you backslide, and you get away from the Lord, and you come back to the Lord, you rededicate your life like the Baptists teach, they're right about that, then it's my thinking that you should redo your first works. Amen. There's nothing wrong with being water baptized again. Right. Uh, I'd like to get baptized in River Jordan sometime, but I haven't ever been to Israel, so, you know, I probably won't. But... That's between you and the Lord, all right? The next thing in the will of God is the gift of the Holy Ghost. The gift of the Holy Ghost. Ephesians 5, 18 tells us, Be not drunk with wine, we're in excess. But what? Be filled with the Spirit, which is the Holy Ghost. Same thing. Not optional. I said, not optional. Paul didn't say, if you want to. No. Be filled with the Spirit. Why? Because Acts 1 8 for power. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Now, look, people, if the Holy Ghost has ever come upon you one time after you've been born again, you have the power. But you've got to learn how to operate in it. Amen. Don't let Satan talk you out of it. When I got saved years ago, Satan said, Oh, you didn't get saved. Try to make me doubt it. When I had a crisis experience with the Holy Spirit, Satan comes, oh, you didn't get the Holy Ghost. Lying devil. Thank you, devil, for confirming God's will to me. That's what Satan does. He comes to you and lies to try to get you to, into disbelieving the will of God. But if you know the will of God, tell him to shut up. Amen. That is the will of God. Take authority. Then in Acts chapter 19, verse 2, of course, we preach on this quite a bit, especially in, in different modes of, of ministry. There are many different modes of ministry. Amen. When I go over to Africa, I, I don't teach to preach the same because they require a different method, a different way. Amen. Paul asked, he said to them, have you received the Holy, Holy Ghost since you believed? And that's the question. And they said, we have not so much as heard where there even be the Holy Ghost. And then we drop down to verse 6. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Amen. It's the will of God. I said receiving the Holy Ghost is the will of God. Amen. Why? Power, prayer language, Nine spiritual gifts open up for you. The Holy Spirit gives them. No one else. Jesus doesn't give them. The Holy Spirit gives them. You might not have talked to him about it. Now, in the specific will of God, which I'm not on tonight, let's say, for example, you're called uh, in the prophet ministry. Well, along with the office comes certain spiritual gifts attached. I'm not on the specific will of God right now because until you do the general will of God, you're never going to find it. Right. Choice is yours. Amen. Well, the Holy Ghost then, baptism the Holy Ghost, is the will of God for every child of God. I don't care where you go to church, it doesn't matter. I don't care what the name of the church is, it doesn't matter. 
The fact is, did they receive the Holy Ghost when they believed or when they were saved? Yes, they did, but not they were not filled. Paul was talking, were you filled? In other words, do you want more of God? See? And when you get more of God, guess what happens? Every single time, the New Testament teaches, they spoke with tongues. It's the will of God, children of God, if you've been filled with the Holy Ghost, to speak with tongues. Amen. Don't let Satan tell you it's vain babbling. He's the babbler, not you. Because he that speaks an unknown tongue doesn't speak to men, but unto God, and that's good enough for me. I don't have to understand it. Just know that God knows everything there is. Praise God. The prayer language is a wonderful gift that each one receives when they receive the Holy Spirit. Don't you want him? Oh, if you don't want the Holy Ghost, oh, you're out of the will of God. One of the crowd's going to get small now. You know, I could have made a lot of money going to the Baptist church, joining the denomination, being a chaplain in the VA, professor in college, made three times the money I, I get here, but I'm not in it for the money. God takes care of us. Glory to God. Amen. I'm not selling my soul to compromise the word for nobody. Amen. Because I know that God's real. And I cannot deny what I know to be true. Amen. So let the chips fall where it will. It doesn't matter anymore. Well then, how many wants to be in the will of God? So that the old timers taught this. If you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, begin to pray. Get in the book of Acts. And seek God until you are filled. I've heard about people up in the 80s. Come to the altar, every service, squall and ball and cry, please, God, fill me. I want the Holy Ghost so bad. Please fill me. And one time she got filled when she was in her 80s. She said, what if I known it had been that way? I'd have been filled a long time ago. The next thing... In the will of God is to study God's Word. Isn't this simple in there? But it is the general will of God for every person on this earth. Without exception. There's only one holy book. Did you all hear that out there? One holy Bible. One. And we are commanded to study it. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 15. Let me read three scriptures here. Amen. Hallelujah. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, which is the word of God. Now let me say this much. If you do not understand the dispensations of time, you cannot rightly divide the Word of God. We are dispensational, pre-tribulational <coughs> Pentecostals. Amen. What do you mean? Well, it's the will of God. It isn't God's will for you to go for the tribulation and get your head cut off from the Antichrist. It's not God's will. I don't want to get on that. Look at verse 15 here. And 16 now, please. So, if we're going to study, and we know the Word of God generally well, that's my burden for the overseas pastors, to teach them the basics so they can teach their congregation because they do not know. We take it for granted. But shun profane and vain babblings. If you know the Word of God, do not even waste your breath on these people. They're antichrist. You hear me? Don't cast your pearls before swine. They will increase unto more ungodliness. You can't stop them. They've got a will. Satan's got a hold of them. They don't want deliverance. So let them go. They're toxic. You got to get tough. Amen. Love 
is tough sometimes. You know, you can win a person by ignoring them. Use a little reverse psychology here. I do it on you sometimes. I withhold revelation to draw you into revelation. You hear that? I said, God gives me a revelation. I don't give it to you so I can draw you into it. If I give it to you, you wouldn't, oh, well, he's crazy. No. And their word will eat as doth a canker of whom is Hymenius and Felicius, whom concerning the truth have erred, uh-oh, saying that the resurrection is passed already and overthrow the faith of some. Now we got supposed Christians that don't even believe in the resurrection, which is the rapture. You better stay away. You better stay away from them. Lest that canker begins to eat on you. If you know the Word of God, you cannot agree with that. Yes, there's going to be a great catching away. Thank God. I will not compromise that. Because it's the blessed hope of the church. And you best not either. Amen. I was going to go up to the Kansas City church up there. I really liked them for a while. Then they got into silliness. But I sent a message to the leaders, the pastor. I said, look, I want, I want to come up and visit your church and everything. And I just feel drawn up there. But I begin to ask some questions. And I read the statement of faith. No rapture. Uh-oh. Did you go? No. You going to compromise? Folks, you're chosen vessels. You cannot compromise God's word for anybody because it's Antichrist. It comes with Scripture, but then it twists it to pervert people's faith and cause them to err and fall from grace. We cannot do that unless God judge us. So then we need to study so we'll know how to conduct ourselves in an ungodly world that we're in. All right, then the next thing in the, in the will of God is prayer. Prayer. Now, Paul said he prayed all the time, and I know we all talk to the Lord uh, most of the time, but what are you praying? Well, bless us for no more, you know. And, and uh, you know what we need, God? And, yeah, he knows. What do we pray? I want to tell you what you're supposed to pray and what we're all supposed to pray. How many wants to know? You pray the Word. I said you pray the Word. His voice, His ears listen to the voice of His Word that's coming out of your mouth, coming out of your spirit. You pray the Word. It's more of a thanksgiving thing than it is an asking all the time. I know we ask, that's part of it, but it's more about thanking God for what He's already given us and what He's given us now and in the future. It's already given God's already given salvation. He's already given the Holy Ghost. He's already given us the ability to study the Word of God. He's already given us the ability to know how to pray. The Holy Spirit helps us pray. Pray the Word, which is the will of God. It's all the will of God I'm talking about. But then wait for the answer. Now sometimes the Word of God is the answer. So you pray the Word, and all the time, He's given us the answer in the Scripture. So now we'll get over to Thanksgiving and praise. You know what? We can praise our way out of trouble. He inhabits the praise of His people. Isn't that what the Old Testament said? Amen. Well, when we pray and we believe and, and just and a lot of us just loving God and, and thanksgiving and just being grateful. I mean, direction will be given. Yes, amen, back there. Direction will be given. Not might be, will be. He said He'd lead His children along, did He not? He would guide us into all truth 
What is the truth? His will. Oh man, we need God's will. Because you'd be happy. Happy. When I'm when I don't know for sure about something, Lord, move me. Change it. I don't know all the details. That's where we go, Lord, if it be thy will, see, James. But if we know God's will, which is his definite word, it's not abstract. It's not ambiguous. It's right down to the point, thus saith the Lord. That's what we stand on. That is God's will for us. All of us here tonight. Don't bend from that. Don't let Satan change that word and compromise the power that's in the word. We refuse. Direction will be given to us because of prayer. In James 5, 16, B. I like the B. To be or not to be? That is the question. James 5, 16. The effectual prayer of a righteous man avails a little. <laughs> What's it say? The effectual fervent prayer, that, that means all the time. What do we do? Lord, Jesus' name, amen, and then walk off. No. We're always supposed to be in a prayerful attitude. Prayerful condition. Open to hear what the Holy Spirit might say when we're chopping wood and running a, a chainsaw. But usually, it's a still small voice when you're away from the hustle and bustle of life. We need to get away and get with God alone. That's what Jesus did. Went up on the mountain get away from everybody. Driving him nuts, right? He was human. Get up on the mountain. Amen. Fact is, thank you, Lord, Jesus never made a decision until he first got prayed through about it. Hello, yes, amen, hallelujah. If you don't feel like you've been... No, strike that. And that's not a feeling, it's a fact. Uh, if you don't have the facts about being prayed through about a problem, then you haven't prayed through. When you pray through, whatever that means, because the heavens are not brass, we're the problem. That, oh, that's the reason fasting helps us get prayed through. Let me tuck my stomach in here. I said, ha! <laughs> you know, these guys, God bless these preachers. They got a big old belly. I call it a beer belly. I don't know what it is. It ain't too much chicken, I guess. Maybe it is beer. They, they got this big beer gut. And they're going to tell me how to live? Woo! When we... When we first moved here, Billy and I, what's it been, 25 years? We went down to the boiler room. We were trying to spruce up this place, which is not possible to do, but we've tried. And the old deacons would get down there and fire up that boiler, and they, they used to have those radiators sitting around. Remember those that we hauled off? And... Uh, <clears throat> We found something very interesting down there, hidden in a hole. It was a bunch of beer cans. <laughs> Them old boys would get down there and fire up that boiler. So one had to burn this thing down. Fire up that boiler. Yeah, God's good, man. And just throw it in there. I don't know how many would carry that, but and that's a true story. I guarantee you they weren't praying too much. Lord, forgive me. Go, go, go. Yeah. Well, the effects of prayer of a righteous man or woman avails much. I'll tell you what. That means don't give up. Keep knocking. Knocking, knocking, knocking. Asking, seeking, knocking, 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 knocking. Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Yeah. Keep on knocking. <laughs> till the answer comes. Then the next thing, we've been doing pretty good tonight now, haven't we? Yeah. But the next thing in the will of God is tithing. Oh, you would have to say that. <laughs> I heard a preacher on the, on the satellite, he goes, 
If you're a tithe, then you're cursing yourself. Wait a minute, I can read. I can read. Beep, I got rid of him fast. Well, it was the law. No, wait a minute. Abraham tithed before the law was given by Moses. Amen. So don't tell me tithe is not for today. Oh, God help me. If you don't tithe, guess what? You're out of the will of God. Period. But you don't understand. Oh, I understand. You covet. You're a tightwad. You're greedy. You're led by the flesh. The Holy Spirit will never tell you to withhold the tithe. I mean never. I don't want your money. God does. Why? Support the gospel. Payday's coming, everybody. And I teach this, and the charismatics don't like it, but it's still true. We pay tithe and we give offerings. Amen. Somebody asked me a question. What would you do if you got $100,000? Well, the first thing I'd do, I'd tie $10,000 into this work right here. Why? Because I believe in this work. You don't send your tithe to some hotshot preacher that's begging for money. You're gambling. You're not in faith. Now, I didn't say you couldn't send offerings to them, but you better be careful. Ten cents on the dollar gets to the mission field. The rest of it's administrative cost. And they're all sitting on gold toilet stools. So wake up. <laughs> Go in there and break that toilet stool. Oh. I'm just telling like it is, everybody. And I got a good word for Mr. Biden. If you would make a law and run it through Congress that every citizen that's an American tithes 10% of their income would be out of debt in America. God knows what he's doing. But the tithe. Why? To uphold the gospel, and it requires faith on your part. Does it not? How many times have we said, we can't afford to do this? And there's something in the flesh that doesn't want to do it. All the more reason to do it. Praise God. Is your prayers being answered? You get down to pray, and the Holy Spirit's going to say, well, but, but you know, what about that tithe? I heard, and I know what I'm talking about. Don't shrug, don't shrug off conviction now. It'd be better to have $90 with a blessing than $100 with a curse. You know, God could take that 90 and stretch that 90. Way more. It's not just about getting money back. Other things go as good. Cows don't die quite as often. <laughs> not so many flat tires. On and on. Not so many doctor bills. Hello. Don't have to take so much medicine. On and on and on. But the thing that really strikes home about people that tithe is this positive aspect. It omits selfishness. How can God bless a stingy person? You think God's stingy? God's a giver. If we knew tonight how important this is concerning the will of God. Someone said, well, can I be saved and not tithe? Yes. Can you stay saved and not tithe? Ask the Lord. I think by grace, yes. But withholding the tithe 
may cause some poor soul to go to hell. You hear what the preacher's saying now? He's got to make me feel bad. Well, if you're tithing, you shouldn't feel bad. I tell you what, I'll withhold this bucket for about a month and see how you all do. Amen. If you knew, let me tell you a story before I get off this, before I get stoned. Yeah, the buddy gets stoned. I like him. <laughs> hey, what's wrong with him? He's my favorite ex preacher, Bob Dylan. Ugh. He's got more money than me. Church is in revival. But people were trying to starve out the pastor. And they were punishing the pastor by withholding their tithes and offerings. Mm -hmm. See, the pastor's full time. They don't have their career and do just a little hobby preaching on the side. That's all they are is a hobby preacher. You hear me? That's one way you know. The Levites were full time Levites. Amen. The Levites received the tithe. They turn around and tithe Moses and Aaron. They're all rich. But what good is gold out there in the desert? Can't eat it. So God sent them quail. Amen. And angel food. Praise God. But this church is getting a revival. The preacher was, the evangelist was hoe in the garden, man. Pastor sitting there beat down. The last night of that week-long revival, hear people come to the altar crying, bringing a bunch of money, and threw it on the pulpit and said, there, pastor, there's your money. <laughs> That's revival. You want revival? <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Well, true story. The last thing I want to talk about in the general will of God is this. Hey, don't, don't let my words condemn you. If you if, I told this church, the widows, I don't think you need to tithe. But I also covered myself. If you're able to, then do. But don't tithe and then say I'm going to eat dog food. We'll take care of you. I say, we'll take care of you. If your family won't, we will. You hear that, widows? If your family won't, we'll take care of you. We'll give you beans and taters and not dog food. <laughs> All right? Don't worry about it. It's the kingdom of God in operation. This bunch can cough up some money, man, I'm telling you. I feel that. This bunch can cough up some money if you need to pay your light bill. You just let us know. But don't run your air conditioner with the door open. Have some common sense. I tried to get my girls to shut off the lights when they went out the door. Had they, had they, did they learn it? No. My mother-in-law, she had a light bulb out there in her little woman cave where they had the, 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 the uh, washing machines and you know, all the dirty clothes and there was a light bulb, and it was on for 20 years. Is that right? 20 years, she never shut the light bulb off. It wasn't Walmart either, I guarantee you. And me, I'm, I'm conservative. I went down there, good little son-in-law. And I went out there, and when I came back, I shut the door, and I shut the light off. Uh-oh. And I got what you call a chewing out. You shut my light bulb off. Now it'll burn out. Two weeks later, the thing burned out. And I was to blame. <sighs> you just can't win. As your faith is, so be it. Is that good enough? Yeah. Let's put it this way. The last thing I want to talk about is something that is called, you may want to know, 
church attendance. Do you hear that there, stand home eating popcorn? Church attendance is not optional. I watched Mary Litzfield crawl up them steps. Don't tell me you can't get in church. We got men to carry you in. No, I'm not putting up no ramp. Even if I did, they can't get down the bathroom. What do you want us to do? Carry them down the stairs, help them put them on the stool, and carry them back up here? Best thing to do is pray and get them healed. Yeah. Amen. You, people do what they want to do. I said people do what they want to do. Now, the reason we live stream is because there's people that cannot come to church. I understand that. Sick and shut in. Maybe they don't have a church. That's what it's for. It wasn't meant to replace the church congregation's ministry. It was an add-on. We've majored on minors. That's wrong. There's no excuse, period, to stay out of the house of God. None. And if you do, Well, I have to work. I understand that. Well, somebody, you know, what what's really bugs me, and we've raised three kids, I hope, and what really bugs me is I've seen people in the last 30, 40 years, they got three or four kids, all right? One of them gets a sniffle. And we all got to stay home and take care of the one with the sniffle. You're out of the will of God. You're not in holiness. Don't misunderstand me. If you make a lot of church attendance, you can be there every time a door's open and still be as dry as a cucumber. But on the other hand, if you're practicing, practicing, practicing the gentle will of God for your life, it'll be a joy to come to church. Oh, we'll enter in His house with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. But if you're out of whack in this will, general will, you can come to church, you can pray and praise and be as dry as a turnip squeezed to death and never get a thing from God because you're out of the will of God. You know, this is better preaching than what amens I'm getting tonight. So we're not going to have no Wednesday night, so there. What does Hebrews 10.25 say? Aha, uh-huh. last scripture. We don't like you. It doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> I don't like me either. And I'm going to tell you something. I obey all these things. Gladly. But there was times I'd walk out on me. There was times I wouldn't listen to me preach. I don't like it. But the Holy Spirit can use the imperfect vessel to bring forth a perfect message. What's it say? Hebrews 10.25. Let's say it together. Are you ready? Wait a minute. King James, please. Not forsaking the ascending of ourselves together as a manner of some is, but exhort one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. What day? The day of the rapture. In other words, don't forsake the church services. Don't do it or you pay the price. I've watched people that would begin to forsake the church services. Now, I know there are times that we can't make it. I understand that. I'm not talking to you people. I'm talking to you that know the will of God, and you're required to do the will of God because you love God. That's it. And you you care about people. You care about the one you're sitting next to. Right? You care about each other. Right? Love. Love. You care about each other, right? And if you're not here to exhort the one you're sitting next to, how do you care about them? So you see, it takes sacrifice. 
Now there's no excuse for not being in church. Unless you're in the hospital or dead. <laughs> then you've been in a church service in the sky. Folks, this is a command. What's the next verse say? If we sin willfully, uh-oh! Everybody say, uh-oh! uh-oh. Zelda, say, uh-oh! Say, uh-oh! Say, uh-oh for me. Aren't you listening to Papa? <laughs> Ezra wouldn't go to sleep in the car. They put on one of my tapes. Bam, put him right to sleep. <laughs> Can't win. It's okay. It's a command. Turn to your neighbor and say, going to church is not optional. It is commanded by the Holy Spirit. Come on. Now, how are we doing on these aspects I've touched tonight? Are we okay? Then you're in the will of God. Say amen. You're in the will of God. Rejoice. Now, after you practice the known will of God for a season, God will show you His specific will for your life. Period. There's where the anointing kicks in to help somebody else and teach them the general will of God. That's our calling. So once we show the Lord these things that we're serious about it, amen. The specifics will come. How many want to know the specific will of God for your life? I mean, without question, what it is. Then you're going to have to prove to the Lord that you're serious about doing His will. And I just went over it very briefly. And if you do that, folks, you're heading to heaven. You know that? You're heading to heaven. We're not under law, we're in grace. But then these aspects in grace are applicable to believers today without exception. So if you're lacking in one of these areas, then tell the Lord, change me. Help me. I want to be in your will. And he'll make a way. But then Satan will try to stop you, but he can't once you make your mind up. I've watched people that, that only make it to church once a month. Easter's coming. Yep. Easter and Christmas, I had people run off one time from church. They left here because I made them mad. Well, whoop de do. <laughs> I'm really crying. <laughs> they said, well, I said that. Some of you just come to church on Easter and Christmas, and that was them. <laughs> How'd I know? I said, I'll see you next Christmas. They left mad. Well, fine. Praise God. Are you glad to be in the will of God? Let's stand up. I preached too long. I'm not sorry. Amen. I had to get this cross. Do you have it? You get a hold of it. Don't bend. Okay? Don't bend. So I'll tell you, the power for specifics is approaching everyone here. Everyone! But you're going to have to show God, show God first you're serious about doing His will. Why would God send you halfway around the world when you won't do His will here? Amen!